Imagine my joy. It's, it really is a pleasure to introduce my next guest. Joseph Cotchy Bonson is somebody who I've talked to from Connecticut. Um, legal mind. What, what was it? You were called a lefty lawyer or something lefty like lawyer, that. I've lefty been called lawyer. That. You've been, been called, called many, many things. things. <laughs> no, but I, I love your take on legal things. So I wanted to do a little segment with you where we look at the eyes of, uh, look at some news stories through your eyes. Now, I know this is one other people have, have looked at but I wanted your take on it they uh, top lawyers defy uh, defy bar to declare they won't prosecute peaceful climate protesters uh, there are 18 barristers including six King's Council they've signed a declaration they will now self refer to the bar standards board for breaking the profession's cab rank rule and I'll get you to describe what the cab rank rule is it that um, they're going to break that and they come out and said look uh, there are what's it? behind every new oil and gas deal sits a lawyer getting rich um, so what, what are your feelings on this? I mean, I don't know. Have you signed? I mean, I, I, I'm <laughs> I haven't. I know people who have. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. I mean, because uh, as you rightly point out, I'm, I'm to the left of centre, depending on uh, on where you regard the centre to be these days. Right. Uh, Tricia, it's interesting, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you know, I think we we it's generally accepted, isn't it? There is a climate emergency. Yeah. Yeah, people, yeah. You know, there, there is a chance of, of, of people, significant numbers of people dying, you know, lives being ruined throughout the world. And, and it, it's the challenge of our age. Mm, mm. Uh, the, the fuel companies, well, uh, the, the idea that oil is still being mined and everything, this is yeah. something that people take, some people take a really extreme view of. And, you know, we've got Just Stop Oil. Remember those guys? Yeah, they're no, the, no, we had them on the show. They're the sticky guys. No, they, they, they talk to us. They actually come and, they, um, you know, I'm, love, I'm really pleased to say I got a young woman from that organization to actually talk through how she feels because and just shouting at somebody doesn't no get and us it's, anywhere, it's actually coherently that. thought out stuff because yeah. there is a link between the actions of, of you know of humanity and indeed oil companies and the future deaths of people we're probably generally accepting of that yeah so but law legally though can no. you say I'm not going to represent you historically that hasn't been the rule and these people say right. well hang on a minute this is a life or death situation this is isn't just about our professional rules we have to take a stand you know as if for example we're in Hitler's Germany and people are getting targeted and lawyers are legitimizing that sir that 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 purpose and you know that that was a that was a, a moral thing and if you involved yourself in that type of society well you know uh, yeah, uh, but I thought lawyers aren't allowed to say no. Doesn't I'm, matter what it what it was. If they're if somebody if, if a corporation or a, a despot yep. or somebody who we would think as as morally corrupt or evil. Um, they still That's right. need to be represented and we, by and a lawyer. we have this rule called the cab rank rule, and it's a really right. good metaphor, because if you think about the cab driver taking a person from A to B, it doesn't ask about their politics, doesn't ask uh, if they're yeah, a good yeah. person, yeah. It takes them from A to B. He's accelerating or enabling them to do the thing they want to do in their life, getting from A to B. Whatever they do when they get to B is not his business. Exactly. You know, and, and similar, you know, or her business. We see black yeah. cab drivers nowadays increase the women. But the, 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 with lawyers, it's really the same. What we're doing is we're translating the needs of our client to make the system fair. Right. Now, I've represented murderers. It may shock you to know I've represented people that you might even regard as worse than murderers. Represented the COO of a company called Cambridge Analytica. Ooh. They weren't too popular a few years ago, were they? But you know what? I got the case. I don't believe particularly in Donald Trump. I don't particularly believe in, you know, in the, the Leave campaign or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, I got the case and I did my job. In fact, he turned out to be a whistleblower. So if I'd judged in that case, uh, I won't represent you. Uh. I would have substituted the role of the judicial process myself with my personal prejudices in fact so, so are you saying in this case then it might be that it's it's 
wrong or you wouldn't agree with it? You know, the thing is, I'm asked that question all the time, as yeah. all lawyers are. How do you... And the, people's eyes light up <laughs> yeah. as if they're speaking to a psychologist when they say to the psychologist, you must know what I'm thinking. Yeah, well, yeah. Trisha, the question us lawyers get is, how can you represent somebody when you know they've done something terrible? Yeah. You know, And the answer is, in a free society, a democratic society, we have a process. And the way that we ensure that the right people go to prison, the way that we ensure that justice is done in all types of cases, yeah. is that lawyers don't have favourites. They just do the job to the best of their ability. Do you know what happens in my in my business, Tricia? If I don't do the best job I can for somebody who I think is probably guilty, right. some smart Alec lawyer, just like me, comes along and says, well, you were represented by this inferior version of Joseph. He didn't do a very good ah. job. Let's get you out on appeal. And then all of a sudden you have a potentially dangerous person walking the streets, all because I decided that I wasn't going to follow my professional duty. Yeah, so if you were asked to defend a CEO of an oil company, um, you would. Yeah, and you know what? I'd have to. And the reason is, I might, and, and I might not be very happy about it. You know, yeah, what, you know yeah. what my politics yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, I know what you, but, but you still but do I, it. I believe in democracy. I believe in a situation where, provided we have a free society and not a totalitarian state where mm -hmm. the lawyers are just used to legitimise it, mm -hmm. if we believe we have a democratic society, lawyers on both sides must do their job. But there is a hook in the tail on this, as there often is, Trisha. Go on. And that's that these lawyers, these 14 or so lawyers who've signed this thing, none of them are prosecutors. None of them have put themselves forward as prosecutors. In reality, how it works is unless you're a prosecutor and known for doing it and open to that work, you'll never get those instructions anyway. Wow. So it's a grand political gesture. Wow. They're very brave and all of that. But the reality is that it's window dressing because oh. no, none of these guys at these kind of anti-establishment, fantastic civil liberties barristers' chambers are ever going to be instructed to represent Esso or Shell or BP. This is why, this is why I love having you on a show. You just get through all the beep, beep, beep. Uh, let's talk about... Um, I, I don't know how you feel about this. Do not expect privacy if charged with a crime, says Police Standards Lobby. Now, I can hear you breathe out already. Yeah. This is the College of Policing statement. It comes after the ICO proposes uh, forces across England and Wales no longer should name those charges. It's a bit convoluted, this. But they're saying people charged with a crime should have no reasonable expectation of privacy. That's the national policing body, that, that standards body they're saying. Um, Chief Constable Andy Marsh uh, says an open, transparent and professional working relationship between the police service and the media is essential to public trust. Our guidance to police voices is clear that at this point, an individual, when an individual is charged with a crime, there should be no reasonable expectation of privacy. We believe this is strongly in the public interest and compatible with data protection law. It's an interesting question, mm. and that was always the position that when somebody was charged with a crime, their name would be published. In yeah. fact, in the past, there was also, a, if somebody was arrested, the police would often, either informally or formally, provide that information to the media. Yeah. Now, you can see all the reasons that that would be damaging to that person if they're innocent, because yeah. their life is never the same again. Well, look at the the, the rape case, the woman who claimed rape against a recent, case. Groom, you know, recent case. Absolutely. All those people that were named just, you know, she made the whole thing up. She their did, lives she, are she ruined. She destroyed their lives. So two you people know, so, were suicidal. And that's it's a awful. strong argument, isn't it? You know, and, and actually you'll see in European dis uh, jurisdictions, if you see somebody being arrested, often they're eyes are blacked out so you can't wow. see their identity but there is an alternative argument that's also important we've heard about transparent justice mm -hmm. but imagine this scenario as often happens serial rapist right. but somebody's only made one complaint only one complainant it's publicized all of the other complainants come out. Do you remember John that, Warboys? Yes, yes. There were multiple levels of complainants. There yes. was a second case. And that's because sometimes it's in the public interest. I don't think it should be one or the other blanket. Right. But there should be some circumstances. 
arguably where th there is merit because otherwise it's only when that's publicised that the others come forward. Yes, you're you know, right. You're and right. have the courage to come forward. And of course if they're children or if they're under a certain age, yes. they can't be. But again, there have been cases right. in the press where they've lobbied to have those names, you know, when probably kids are around that age, they've lobbied to have they kids' have names publicised. With the, which, the, with the, with the, with the killers in that awful murder in Merseyside in the yeah. 1990s of Jamie Bulger. <laughs> it's so difficult. I have to tell you that one of the great fears of my client, will my name be publicised? Yeah, yeah. And actually, publicised now doesn't just mean the local paper. No. It means Social people media. who don't have the resources to instruct lawyers to get sue websites that stuff's forever mm. and i think you know in our local communities it back in the day trisha you know after five or ten years people would people stop gossiping yeah, about yeah, you they yeah, might remember yeah. but your life could return back to normal we don't have that right to be forgotten except for the very rich really yes. in our society yes. and really it's 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 something of a tragedy i, I I, I'm very sympathetic to any client who says to me, you know, will you know the, the agony of something being published yeah. because of the effect also it has on relatives, family. You can't I, simply <laughs> move away and start a new life. Even the kids at school. That's it. And you it's serve your sentence or serve your penalty, even if you're guilty. But actually, your penalty in some ways, when you go out into society, Trisha, it's just beginning. That can't be right. So it's an incredibly complex area. Mm -hmm. I don't like comments like this thing from the co the College of Policing. <laughs> saying this is how we're going to do it no, because, because they're taking a nuanced and complex situation uh, with with multiple variables lots of things that we think well that's good and uh, you know yeah. this i'm uncomfortable about and instead of discussing it openly we're on one side or the other that can't be the way no uh, who would have thought it of the police at the moment um hot spot policing <sighs> Sorry. This is where you get the real guffaws from me, I'm afraid. Right, yeah. hot spot policing to halt rise in antisocial behaviour. Yeah. That's, this is public drug use, fly tipping, low level crimes such as graffiti are to be targeted with a strategy of hot spot policing yeah. and short and sharp punishments under plans for a crackdown on antisocial behaviour. They're going to be announced next week, apparently. Uh, a ban on the sale and possession of nitrous oxide. That's going to be an interesting one around uh, Christmas and birthdays and twenty laughing gas yep. and what have you um the crack time will come alongside this is where you might hear guffaws from me. The crackdown will come alongside an announcement for tens of millions of pounds for grassroots sports and community clubs like what we had when I was yeah. growing up. This carrot and stick approach is aimed at offering youngsters activities to occupy their free time and to divert them away from antisocial behaviour. Uh, Michael Gove, the levelling up minister, is going to mention this. I mean, where's the money coming from? Where's the police going to be coming from? Yeah, yeah. But legally, how do you feel about this? OK, right. Well, zero Zero tolerance policing action and all of this clearly designed uh, for votes? A, a, it's a weekend policy announcement which means an election doesn't it oh. you know? so we've got yeah. uh, these kind of uh, 48 hour fix your own graffiti orders the police oh, yes. are going to That's give to the right. hoodlums and of course they're going to come back with a bucket with a uh, with a, their bucket of soap and sort that out they're not just going to be in the magistrates court the next week because they haven't done it uh, but you can see why it's attractive to a kind of hard working straight is straight slightly old fashioned yeah. but moderate brexit style voter in the red wall who's a bit confused about which party that they should be supporting <laughs> in this current climate it's progressive yet tough and 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 these are key votes right uh, but where are the police going to come from? Well, I mean, I just think it's as far as this hotspot policing is concerned. And let me explain a bit about that. It's right. not a new thing. It's not even... No, called... it's not a new thing. The drinking in public places, yeah. for instance, and what have you, drinking within certain areas yeah. and yeah. what have you, um, taking of drugs in, in yeah. public. I mean, we walked past somebody smoking a, a joint the other Absolutely. day. Absolutely. I mean, what? As Noel so... Gallagher once said, for some people it's as normal as drinking a cup of tea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I go for a run. I, I mean, you know, I, I used to get high on adrenaline. Now mm. I could literally get high. <laughs> I mean, on someone else's smoke. On somebody else's smoke. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, but I mean, seriously, you're yeah. where are you going to get these police who can't yeah. already I, do the, the I hard just, stuff? I think it's nonsense. This part of it. 
uh, is well-meaning, but they're presenting it as something new. This is 1980s American research that has pervaded the whole of policing since 1987 when the research came out into the early 1990s. And and it's wonderful stuff. It's actually the the premise, despite the statistics that are stated here, I've done a bit of reading about this in the Mm. past, I think it's actually 97% of violent crime or crime happens in uh, about 3% of addresses. Right. So if you tar- if you look at those numbers and that those locations and the statistics and mm. target your force there that works. You need enough police officers <laughs> and that's the major problem here, but they're presenting this as something new. What they're suggesting to police is hey guys, we're the politicians, hot spots policing. We're going to teach you about this. They don't even get the name right in the press release. Trisha, it's hot spots policing not hot spot policing <laughs> <laughs> and the police in this country and every country in the world Rolling have been eyes. doing it since Rolling i was eyes. six years old <laughs> right the uh, which is a rather longer th- a time than uh, my boyish good looks might suggest yeah. Trisha. But, but, but but here's the thing the the, the the whole thing about youth clubs and and putting money into that why can't they if they could have done that why didn't they do it a long time ago? If they could ago? have done it, they wouldn't have taken the funding away in 2008, 9, 10 to bail out the bankers. We're all in this together. Yeah, Austerity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are a couple of things that had a massive effect on not just the knife crime and kind mm. of disadvantage and all of that, which, which is a major factor, but also the idea that police are around or not and yeah. we saw that s- massive increase in knife crime acid attacks yeah. kind of these kind of scooter hooligans and all of this stuff and the this is because the kids trisha were the first ones to realize that the police all of a sudden the, the emperor wasn't wearing any clothes. clothes and they spotted it first they pushed the thing and then all of a sudden you've got a breakdown at a certain level of society in respect for the law and mm-hmm. it's not about telling the police something that they've known. Already know. You can use fancy computers to tell them, oh, yeah, this is a really rough area. There's, you know, officer, may I tell you that my members of parliament, friends, and, and I have it's been ridiculous. saying this is an area you should focus on. There's like an they al- don't know. There's, like an, algor- they don't there's know. an algorithm that tells us this. Now, these police know. You know, their problem but, is but, numbers but, and funding. But also, the thing is, I mean, you know, they use the law they look at the law to cure all social yeah, ills yeah. we know and our my hot thing is is sure start early parenting we know factually that if you get parents involved and give them support right from the beginning yeah. then children's mental health children's outcomes are better fact fact yes Whoosh. They took Sure Start and away. The knife crime generation. Once those kids grew up, that's when the that's figures ticked up, and it was sh- it was the it was the abandonment of Sure Start. Oh, sure, absolutely. And of the youth club club funding. Youth club. And tens of millions of pounds will not even begin to scratch the surface yeah. of the damage that's been done yeah. by neglecting the poor youth and the young families in poverty in this country. Couldn't couldn't agree with you more. And the answer is uh, politically to say we're going to do something about it with the police and legally in the courts they don't have enough barristers uh, who've got backlogs of two years with the police who can't solve thefts or or major crimes because they're too thin on the ground this is why I like having you on Trisha, the show. Trisha, you and I need to sort these things out, don't we? But we, I think we've already started. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming into the studio. It's a pleasure to see you in the flesh. I will see you down the line from Connecticut in, fu- uh, in future. Uh, Joseph Cotry monson there, as you heard. Got lots and lots of common sense. It gives you something to think about as well.